45-year-old woman is attending an appointment at your urology clinic, complaining of incontinence. She mentions that she had recently given birth to her third child five months ago. She says when she sneezes or coughs, she wets herself. Attempting to mitigate the issue, she has reduced her fluid intake and tries to empty her bladder more frequently. My name's Connor, and in this week's episode of More Than Skin Deep, we'll be covering the anatomy of the pelvic diaphragm, illustrated by John, in five minutes. Before we begin, here are the various sources we've used in this tutorial. We've previously made two other videos on this topic, covering the micturition reflex and the gross anatomy of the kidneys. We highly recommend that you take a look at these to get a more holistic understanding. First, here's a sagittal view of the pelvis. The pelvis is combined of three embryologically separate bones, the ileum, pubis, and ischium. During development, these bones fuse to form the innominate bone Innominate here, meaning unclassified. The ileum articulates with the sacrum and coccyx posteriorly via the sacroiliac joint. A notable structure of the sacrum is the sacral promontory, which projects anteriorly and forms the posterior boundary of the pelvic inlet. The sacral promontory articulates with the L5 vertebral body superiorly via the lumbosacral intervertebral disc. The sacrum has openings bilaterally known as the ventral and dorsal sacral foramina. These are the foramina where the pelvic nerves mentioned in the micturition reflex tutorial exit through. The ischium has two prominent protrusions known as the ischial spine and the ischial tuberosity. The ischium is held to the sacrum posteriorly via the sacrospinous ligament, named because it runs from the sacrum to the ischial spine. This is followed by the sacrotuberous ligament, which is aptly named as it connects the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity. These ligaments divide the space between the pelvic bones and the sacrum into the greater and lesser sciatic foramina. Another important foramen in the pelvis is the obturator foramen, covered by the obturator membrane. There is a gap in the obturator membrane known as the obturator canal. The obturator nerve, artery and vein pass through this gap. The remaining prominences of the pelvis are the anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine and pectineal line. The prominences act as crucial attachment points for various structures, such as the inguinal ligament, rectus femoris, and pectineus muscle. Moving posteriorly, the superior margin of the ileum is known as the iliac crest, and the posterior counterpart of the anterior superior iliac spine is the posterior superior iliac spine. Lastly, the pelvis has a symphyseal surface anteriorly, which allows one half of the pelvis to articulate with its other half via the pubic symphysis. This is a superior to inferior view of the pelvis. Here is the aforementioned pubic symphysis. To orient ourselves, the sacrum lies posteriorly with the sacral promontory superiorly. Laterally lies the iliac crest of the ileum. Recall that the sacrospinous ligament divides the space between sacrum and innominate bones into the greater and lesser sciatic foramina. The greater sciatic foramen contains various structures such as the piriformis muscle, a short hip adductor. Another short hip adductor is the obturator internus muscle, which originates from the obturator membrane. Moving more medially, we have the coccygeus muscle. This is actually a vestigial muscle with no demonstrable function. Further medially, we meet the iliococcygeus, pubococcygeus, and puborectalis. These three muscles run in that order and are arranged from most lateral to most medial. Collectively, they form the levator ani muscle. The levator ani and coccygeus muscles together form the pelvic diaphragm. You will notice three structures which pierce the pelvic diaphragm in a female. These are the anal canal, vagina and urethra respectively, from most posterior to most anterior. Next we move to an inferior view of the pelvis. The pubic symphysis is moved superiorly from the last image, hence the superior aspect of the image is in the anterior orientation and the inferior aspect the posterior orientation. The most posterior structure piercing this pelvic diaphragm is the anus. Immediately anterior to the anus and posterior to the vagina is the perineal body. This is a crucial structure to maintain the integrity of the pelvic diaphragm. It may rupture during birth due to a dilated vaginal canal and can lead to various complications such as prolapse of the pelvic organs. Now let's return to our patient. The unintended leakage of urine described by the patient is known as incontinence. Specifically, this is stress incontinence, as the leak is brought on by an increase in intra-abdominal pressure seen in sneezes and coughs. 
treatment depends on the extent of the weakness in the pelvic diaphragm. A common conservative treatment utilized are Kegel exercises, which strengthen the pelvic diaphragm muscles. And there we have it, the musculoskeletal anatomy of the pelvis and its diaphragm in under five minutes. If you liked today's tutorial, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment below with what you'd like to see us cover next. Have a great day.